Well, hello, everyone. This is none other than PEGB. And being pray of Prophet Elder Gloria Brown, coming to you live at Can We Talk? Or well, either ain't no stopping us now because our youth is on the move. It started already. To God be the glory. Well, I just want to give a shout out before I pray to none other than Mother and Deacon Reed, Sister and Deacon Johnson, and also Sister Ezekiel, Mother Ethel, uh, to everyone, even in New York, Long Island, uh, Sister Rose, I'm not going to call her last name, but grace and peace unto you all. Did you have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weekday all from last week all the way up to this week? Well, we had some members in our church, and we had one of our famous members pass away. Well, everybody's famous, but he was the one to take care of the pastor and the ministers and anyone else. And also, he was the usher. Always smiling, always happy, always saying, Elder Brown, put a smile on your face. Well, sometimes people say, I smile too much. So, you know, that ain't good, right? But anyway, I'm not sad. And when someone makes me sad, it just makes me smile deeper. Because the word of God says in Psalms 30 and 5, it says, anger and do for a moment. Weeping may and do for a night, but joy come early, early in the morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. He served, uh, we serve, you serve, I serve, we serve an awesome God. Let us pray. Mercy, Father, in your son Jesus' name, Jehovah Jireh, who is our provider, El Shaddai and Ananias. I thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning and the peoples at the sound of my voice. Now, God, anoint my tongue, anoint my eyes, and anoint my ability to speak and say what thus said the Lord. Not my way, but thy divine way. You're awesome and you're worthy to be praised. It always say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that you've done for you and I, our very soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for blessing and keeping and guiding and protecting. We ask you to bless our pastor. We bless English chapel. We ask that you bless our general bishop. We ask that you bless all the saints around the world and bless in Jerusalem, forgive in Gaza, and bless the people that don't even know what's going on. We ask that you bless our mayors, our governor, the president of the United States. We ask that you bless everyone in authority. We ask you to bless our police department. Oh God, we ask you to bless here at the studio. Let your will be done in your son Jesus' name. I command that the screen be open and that we be pressing broad, wide, where people will see us unexpectedly. Because in the book of Ruth, Almighty oh God, you said, we all are famous when we love the Lord. So now I embrace and I love you and I praise you that you will open those doors that no man can shut. And God, you will give us all favor because favor is not fair. And whatever the canker worm and the caliper pillar and the grasshopper try to eat up, you're going to restore. That's what it says in Joel 2.25. And to God be the glory. You are awesome and you're worthy to be praised. Thank you. I embrace your love for all mankind. And I want to say happy Valentine's Day every day, even though it's two days away. But it's your Valentine's Day is every day. Amen. <laughs> God is good. Well, today, I don't know what I want to talk about because I didn't write anything down. But I want to say this much that um, I had got, or, uh, not ordained, but a, um, a, a paper where someone congratulated me and gave me a certificate a long time ago about I'm an ambassador. So I was told yesterday, can't tell you everything, but from now on, that's what I'll be when it comes to our church for our pastor. So I'm saying that 
An ambassador is someone that goes out and speak everywhere. It could be overseas, Jamaica. It could be in India. It could be in California, Mississippi, New Orleans, Alabama, South Carolina, Delaware, wherever God want to send you. You got to be prepared and be ready for that. So I'm just saying to you that pray my strength in the Lord as I pray for you. Because it's not about me. It's about him, God Almighty and his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But I will say this much to you. That when we speak life into you, you take that and give it to someone else and speak life into them. Speaking life into someone who might be sad, could be an alcoholic, a prostitute, or could be a homosexuality person. However, we're going to speak life into them so they can change their ways. Well, who, who am I to say that? Well, you know what? I was a person... I didn't know how to cuss till I came to Connecticut. And then I, would, I learned stuff like that. I, I, I didn't know how to swear, curse, and nothing until I came here. Because I got a job and my boss didn't teach me how to express myself. So I went around to each department and I would listen at them. <laughs> and I was thinking, my mind was somewhere trying to get the job done and get it right. But I, when they do it bad and they thought they were going to get over on me, when I walk around the, the East Tank, I would hear them saying words that, that I ain't never heard before. My, my father didn't cuss in our house. So I would pick up the words. And when, then, when someone started to make me mad, I would say what they said. To God be the glory, I didn't know no better. You know, I just, whatever they said, I said it. One day, a lady took me in the bathroom. I don't know what trusted her to um, grab me by my arm. And sat. First, she said, I love you. She said, now, come and go with me. And I said, well, where are we going? She said, just come and go with me. When we get in the bathroom, she said, you are beautiful. I didn't have this weight on me. I was skinny, right? She said, and I love you. She said, but that mouth of yours is saying things that you shouldn't be saying. I don't care what them guys and girls say over there in that corner. You shouldn't be. She was talking to me like you would talk to a child. Anybody else, I would have got mad, upset, and said what I'd say. But for some reason or other, I listened to her. So what I'm trying to say to you, there's people that's going through a lot of things and when they're going through a lot of things, we have to show them love by hugging them. Don't, be, don't think that you cannot hug a prostitute when she's in the street. That's your job because you don't know what that hug means. It means that if God tell you, like he told me one time, when I did get saved, you know what he said to me? Get up out of the bed. I'm like, huh? It's 9 o'clock. I don't want to sleep. I got to go to work at 3 the voice said, get out of the bed. And then he told me to take a track. I'm like, is this God talking to me? Or oh, this is myself. And he told me to walk from Trumbull Garden stop sign all the way up to uh, Reservoir. When I got up there, two men were sitting on the corner. I guess they was dealing or whatever they were doing. I don't know. He told me to walk over to that person and give them a track and tell them I love them. I said, mm, 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 mm. When I got ready to walk towards them, and you know what the man said to me? Don't you come nowhere near me. And I'm like, okay, God, you got me out of bed at nine. You had me to come up here. You had me to give him, told me to take a track. And he telling me, don't come nowhere near him and don't touch him. I said, but I'm just doing what I was told to do. So I just want you to receive what God got for you. I don't want to hear it, he said. I walked, I wasn't scared. I was not afraid. I had learned my lesson when I was living in New Jersey as a young uh, person before I moved to California. And then when I came back to Jersey, I really learned my lesson 
when I went to karate school. So I wasn't scared. <laughs> and I was just saved. So you put them two together, right? Anyway, I walked up to him anyway. And I handed him the track. And I said, God bless you. You're going to change. I walked away. Do you know about a month later, we was riding up the street. My aunt was driving. And this man came across the street running when he got to the stop sign. I guess the first one get to the car makes the sale. And I guess they thought that we was going to buy what they were selling. And But when he got to the car, the car hit him. And he laid on the front of the car with both hands stretched out mirror to mirror. And my aunt was so scared she didn't know what to do. And when she slammed on the brakes, he fell off the car. But let me tell you, God didn't let no bruises come on him. He didn't get hurt. We said we want to call an ambulance, call a doctor. And he said, no, no, no. He started running the opposite way. Three months later, we prayed to get a center up in Trauma Garden. And when I walked in the door, who did I see up there serving the people? I'm not going to call his name. He was there. And I said, look, what's going on? I said, what happened to you? He said, I changed. I learned who God is. So what you see, if I had not obeyed God that night and got up there and gave him that track, and when he told me don't come near him, I wasn't afraid of him. I went to him anyway. I said, you know what? Greatest he is in you than he is in the world. So I got him, who is Jesus, in me. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence that I could not see it that night, the evidence of things not seen. God knew that man was going to change, but he was putting me through a test. Will she go out there and, and talk to the people that people don't want to talk to? If they smell bad, they don't want to touch them? Will she do that for me? And from that day on, seeing that young man in that community center, shaking people's hands, giving them a hug at the door, looking good, all of a sudden something blew up in me. Well, Lord, what you want me to do? And I went to my old leader who's going to be with the Lord, and I said, look, I want, to do a, I want to do a prayer breakfast up here. And he said, up where? I said, in Trauma Garden. He said, okay. That's what God was leading me to. And I didn't quite understand. And he said, well, you going to do something about it? I said, yes. He said, well, pray, and then come back to me. And we prayed. He was praying. I know when he's praying because his forehead get a circle in it, a line. That means he's praying to himself. And I prayed. And a month later, I went back to him. He said, well, what you going to do about it? He said, don't you have to um, go to somebody, con contact somebody? I said, well, I'll write a letter to the housing authority. And you know I did that, and they gave me the keys to the door. <laughs> And every morning, I said, well, God, how am I going to have a breakfast? I don't cook. What am I going to do about food? And the head man, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Roger, and Miss Martin, and a few other people said, you don't have to cook. We'll buy the food. What do you want? I said, eggs, grits, bacon, sausages, a grapefruit juice, children's juice. Everything I wanted, we wanted. They got it, and they made the food, and they washed the dishes and cleaned the kitchen. We had puppet show. Our first lady would play the keyboard. Brother Mason would bring the equipment up every Saturday morning. Bishop would speak, and then Bishop would sit back and just watch us. Mobley, Temple. We had an awesome time. So what I'm saying that, when we looked around, we had 39 children, 27 adults, 
Now, I'm just a baby in Christ. And nobody came and told me. I knew it represented the Bible, 39 in the old, 27 in the new. I knew that. But it wasn't told to me it was a church. <laughs> I didn't have no tension of being nobody's pastor. But I had tension of being a prayer warrior, intercessor. And then my pastor set me in the church and made me stand up and said, she's the knee baby and she is the prophetess in the house. That mean if God show me something, tell me something, I will tell it to him. And he will move on it after he pray about it. You understand where I'm coming from? So let me tell you, boys, girls, women, gentlemen, fathers, mothers, grandparents, when God give you something, you begin to move on it. And I thought when time was up, which it wasn't, he came to me, he said, are you going back to school? And I said, yes. He looked at me like to say, what is she doing? We've been up here all these months. The room is packed out. The odor of the Lord is here. The anointing of the Lord is here. God, God is, is in the house. Oh, his weapons are in the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His anointing is all over the place. Even the children was happy. And I was saying, I'll go back to school because we had a school in our church. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Sister Marsh, I ain't going to say no more. Everything I needed, she made sure I got it. She would bring it to my house and ring the doorbell, and they would take off. She don't think I know that. She know now. She watches the segment. And I kept saying I'd go back to school. Well, who going to run this, the, the, the place, the prayer unit? Who going to run it? And a pastor was there, and she said, well, Elder Brown, can I take over? And I allowed her to take over something that God had told me to do. And I thought that somebody would come and say, Elder Brown, this is God's plan that you're doing. No one said it to me. They was on, waiting on me. They were day to wait up on the Lord shall renew that strength. They was waiting on me to figure it out myself. I let the pastor have it. It didn't even last three months. Everybody walked away. So what I'm trying to say in the book of John, there's a word called honorly. That means the Lord said, when you walk away, his, walk away from his plan, you have scattered his sheep. So I was saying to myself, well, Lord, I want to do this, I want to do that. I don't know if I'm going to come back on television anymore. And he spoke to me just a few minutes ago about what I'm saying now. You don't know, I don't care if one person see what are we doing. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He said the back of your card said, one soul at one time. So now I'm going to move it from one soul at one time. To Lord, we want 10 million people to be saved per month, per year. I'll take a month and I'll take a year. And if I can't do it, somebody else can. The weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. We got a lot of strongholds as Christians, but don't worry about it. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly in all that we may ask or think. And when people's uh, taking what you're doing and doing it their way, it won't last long. Don't worry about it. Tap them on the shoulder and say, go ahead, brother. Tap them on the shoulder. Go ahead, sister. <laughs> I know for a fact it won't work. So just hold on. Hold out. And wait on God make some changes around you. 
It said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let me exhort his name together. We got to pray for Bridgeport, Stratford, Hartford, Waterbury, Derry Inn. We got to pray for Mississippi, Alabama, New York. We got to pray for London, Israel, Jerusalem. We have to pray for Delaware, oh, South Carolina, Virginia. We have to pray for Arkansas, mm, Canada. We have to pray for everybody. And that's why we say, Lord, pray for the universe. I wake up in the morning time. It got to be about 2.48 or 3 something. Every morning, God walk me, wake me up mostly. I go to the door. I open it. I say, good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Now, Lord God, thank you for your angels. We thank you for Gabriel. He's a messenger. We thank you for Michael. He the fighter. And we thank you for Raphael for keeping our community straight. Then bless Jerusalem. Then bless Israel. Then bless the United States. Then bless America, the universe, and bless us all in Jesus' name. I go back in my room and go back and lay down and go back and go to sleep. Sometimes I guess my dog will be saying, is she okay? <laughs> The word said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exhort his name together. Hallelujah. He's awesome. He's good. So, Miss Ethel, I love you. Because when I get that card from you every other month or whatever time I get it, you know what? It makes me feel so good. You know, when you have people that are helping you to do things, appreciate who you are and not take it from you, it make you feel wonderful. It make you feel good. It put laughter in your heart, put a smile on your face. But I want to tell you something. Something is getting ready to happen. I was going to get me an attorney. I don't want to sue nobody because God said in the book of, um, Ruth, <laughs> we have favor and we famous. Everything that the television got, they got it from the Bible, whoever started it. You hear me? Advertisement is in the Bible. Ad is in the Bible. Famous is in the Bible. Celebrity is in the Bible. You might look at me like I'm stupid, but I'm very, very smart in the things that God gives me to do. Why? Because it's just my body, but it's intelligence that giving me to do it. One man said to me, Miss Brown, why are you prostituting your children? I said, what does that mean? I don't prostitute any. He said, yeah, you taking them, you letting them do things, and you ain't getting no pay for it. He said, every time you take them to sing, you take them to dance or praise dance or take them to the Poconos or wherever, when people call for your group, you're supposed to get a contract, and you're supposed to get a big fat check. But I couldn't feel that. I couldn't see it that way. When I wake up in the morning and I'm closing my right mind, when I can feel my legs moving and I can feel my hands waving at you, when I can see my mouth and lips moving and I can hear my ears when I'm talking, that's my fat paycheck. When I could, my daughter the other day that was she was causing me some little bitty things. And when she told me she worked for a doctor, assistant, you know that made me feel good. When they told me to write my son off, that he would never get it. My son is a number one drummer and just got a job making boogaloo money, they say, as a school teacher. And everybody where he lived, 
recognize him and help him. He played for people that played Shirley's Miss Caesar. He played for other people. Wait a minute. Don't tell me God not good. They watching him every day on TV along with me, his mom. So don't tell me what God won't do when you pray for your kids. Yeah, they might get wild and get ugly and get nasty, but at the end, they're going to come back. You understand what I'm saying? I got a daughter here now, right here in Bridgewater. She's doing her thing. And she watched me so much until I can't even show her what I'm doing no more. But you know what? To God be the glory. It's black history. And if I had my whole group together, you know where we'd be? We'd be at St. Vincent. We would be at St. Vincent in the lobby. And all my groups would be playing, you know, Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, praise dancing, mind dancing, the front news of the paper. It's not about me, it's about all of us. So I got to go. I love you. And God love you more. So I'm going to say to you, hold your head high. Whatever you're in need of, keep praying for that person that don't want to listen to you. Because God is in control. The weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God for pulling down those strongholds. You be blessed. Jehovah Jireh is on your side, your provider, and the Lord is your shepherd. And I'm just going to say, this is Elder Brown signing off. Shalom, shalom. Peace.